Hello everybody and welcome to this video class of introduction to segmentation techniques. This is the summary of the class of today. We will first uh, talk about the definition of what is segmentation. Then we will present some simple segmentation techniques and then we will go further to uh, advanced segmentation techniques presenting one example of uh, segmentation. So to start with the definition of segmentation, there can be some uh, possible definitions of any segmentation and the basic idea is to find groups of pixels that uh, go together in some sense. So the image is partitioned into regions of connected pixels with uh, according to some property are similar and uh, at the same time uh, these regions of similar uh, pixels are dissimilar to adjacent regions based on uh, a, any kind of property. This uh, reminds a concept in the statistics which is cluster analysis and it in some sense is what we are we doing when we segment images. So here we can see some Two examples of image segmentation on the left, some coins here, where the target is uh, get uh, marked the regions where the coins are. And here on the right you have a more complex, more complex image where uh, we have uh, grass here, it can be seen here segmented, we have a building, we have the shadow of the building, the water and the sky. These are uh, different regions conceptually and the ideal situation would be that we have a segmentator that separates these uh, different regions uh, by any way. <coughs> we could see image segmentation as a complementary approach to edge detection. In some sense, with edges we try to identify boundaries of objects and with segmentation we try to identify the regions that are occupied by this object. So in theory uh, edges should be uh, also a way to segment uh, regions, but it's not always the case. For instance here, if we would use edges in this case, these edges here maybe would produce an error or could be uh, misleading our system. So edges could be used for segmentation, but not always. And uh, the goals of segmentation can be many. Uh, by finding a meaningful region, regions of the image, uh, then uh, we can uh, apply further uh, processing to the image. Uh, here, for example, we can first uh, try to segment or find where the person is and then after that we can track the, the, where the person is going or the movement of the person here on the right by segmenting or detecting where the cars are uh, we can count the number of cars we can track cars across lanes and so on so after segmentation there are many things that can be done segmentation is usually seen as an uh, initial um, point to many other algorithms or maybe just for visualization can, can be also the case. So formally uh, segmentation can be defined as seen in this slide. Segmentation of an image that we, will, we would call omega is a partition into sub images SY uh, such as uh, these three constraints here are satisfied. On the first hand, uh, the sub-images cannot be empty. Secondly, the union of the different sub-images uh, should be the entire image. And on the third hand, the intersection of any two sub-images uh, should be equal to empty. So uh, the different regions that we segment in the image uh, cannot be overlapped. This is an example of uh, image segmentation. 
uh, here we are interested in tracking images for environmental surveillance so we place here some uh, pieces of paper and when the animal which has this kind of toe uh, it leaves these uh, different marks here so if we are able to segment uh, the, these uh, regions we should be able to identify or uh, define the footprint and, of, and then following the different steps we should be able to define the track so this is an example where uh, segmentation can be seen as an initial step that enables uh, further processing at a higher level in other cases uh, we maybe are not interested in all regions of the image or maybe we are only interested in uh, one region of the image only in this case maybe we are interested in knowing where there is a person for many kind of purposes and in this case um, we tell that the person uh, is the object of interest also called foreground and the rest of the image mark in blood here in black here uh, is the background of the image and uh, it means that is the region that we are not interested in so we will not apply further processing we are only interested in what is happening uh, here in the back in the foreground of our image so let's pass to um, the first sample segmentation technique which is uh, thresholding thresholding is a simple case of segmentation where uh, image contains object with similar gray level and these objects can be clearly distinguished from a background which is uniform so if we plot the histogram of uh, this image we can see a region here which corresponds to the dark pixels of the background and another region here which corresponds to bright pixels of the coins so we should be able to place a threshold on some point in between and based on this threshold we uh, separate the coins or the regions of interest from the background there is a statistical method uh, to do that, which is called Otsu method. This method assumes that the image has two classes of pixels that can be separated, or also that the histogram has two modes, as in this example here. So what it does is to find a threshold that over the, so that the overlap between these two classes is minimized. To find this threshold, make use of uh, this expression here the combined spread or interclass variance where we have two variants here which are the variance of pixels below the threshold and the variance of pixels above the threshold weighted by the probabilities of each class so we uh, move the threshold find uh, this combined uh, variance here and find the threshold where this variance is minimized so um, this is one example uh, applying Otsu method uh, this is the optimal uh, threshold generated by the Otsu method these are examples with higher threshold where we can see that these regions are uh, bigger and these are examples with a smaller threshold and in this case a smaller threshold means that uh, we are missing uh, points here uh, within these regions these are uh, two more examples this is the examples of the coins that we have been seeing in previous slides and this is the optimal threshold found using Otsu method of course a method is not perfect here we have a coin which has some dark uh, points inside uh, so uh, after applying the threshold uh, these regions here are considered background but in any case uh, we get uh, indication roughly or where uh, the different coins are so we, we apply further processing here we should be able to identify the position and 
other parameters probably. This is an example with a more complex image. In this case here uh, we don't have uh, clear objects that can be uniformly separated from a background but in any case the method will produce uh, a result based on uh, on this expression here before. So this is the threshold uh, given by the method and this is the result of applying this threshold to the image. So the bright regions here of the sky are separated from the other regions and also bright regions here of uh, the image are indicated here also in white and uh, also regions here. So what it's doing is um, separating uh, bright regions from dark regions. Uh, it doesn't, uh, this method uh, doesn't take into account uh, any shape or any location or where they are or if they are forming shapes or any other uh, thing. They, it just uh, separates dark from uh, uh, bright regions using a statistical optimization. These are two examples where this method uh, works well and it's uh, separation of uh, characters in optical character recognition or uh, segmentation of signatures in pieces of paper. In this case you can see that segmentation works uh, really well because we have the background of the paper which is clearly distinguishable from the, um, uh, from the signature. So in these two cases uh, there are not complex cases and uh, this uh, segmentation works uh, really well. There is also a variation of the method that allows to work with different thresholds and uh, there is a MATLAB uh, uh, command for that. This here are the two instructions in MATLAB to where that you can use to segment images using the OTSU method and uh, this instruction multithreads allows to define more than one threshold so you can tell to the algorithm that I know in some way that I have more than one image here, more than one region that are different from the background. Here we have the background in grey and objects that are white and black. So in this case our histogram has three uh, different modes here corresponding to the three different uh, grade levels found in this image. So if we tell the algorithm that it should find th two thresholds then the algorithm will f uh, position these two thresholds to separate the modes that uh, are found in the histogram. So as a result we have here uh, segmentation of uh, the, these regions. Now let's pass to the next, next uh, simple segmentation technique based on uh, seed growing. This method works directly with, uh, with image pixels, not with histogram as in the previous case. And the procedure is as follows. We start with one pixel called seed pixel and then we, in a recursive way, we add uh, pixels in the neighborhood that satisfy some similarity criterion and then we stop when we don't find more neighbor pixels that satisfy uh, the similarity criterion used. For this method we need to define the adjacency relation. Uh, if we want to work with four neighborhood here or with eight neighborhood and uh, uh, this means uh, which pixels around a pixel P we consider to be neighbors. In this case we only consider to be neighbors these four pixels here on top, bottom, right and left. And these four pixels here on the corners are not considered to be a neighbor on the, of this pixel. So when this method is growing only it will only look for pixels uh, here in these four points if we are using this kind of adjacency relation. If we use eight neighborhood uh, relation then when we're in a pixel we will look for 
the 8 pixels around to see if they satisfy uh, the similarity criteria that uh, we are using. Depending on the use of one or the other case, we will get uh, different results. For instance, here in this example, depending of the type of the type of uh, relation that we are using, we would consider that uh, the black uh, pixels are different regions, each one, or uh, they are uh, corresponding to the same region. So the results of the graph here will be different. Another important question to take into account here is that uh, the outcome of the segmentation must be independent of the seed pixel. So if we choose a different seed pixel, we should not get a uh, different segmentation. This is an example of how this can happen. In this case, uh, for example, we are using an adjacency relation of 8 and we impose a similarity criterion to merge adjacent pixel whose intensity difference with respect to the set seed pixel is uh, less than a value. Uh, the value in this example is uh, 15. Here on the left we have an example starting here. So we will start in this yellow point and then we start to grow this region and it stops when the difference uh, in intensity between this point and new points here are uh, bigger than 15. So uh, it will stop when this uh, constraint is, is found. On the right we have an example uh, starting here. So this the algorithm will start to grow uh, this region and will stop when new pixels have uh, different an intensity different bigger than 15 with uh, this uh, origin pixel here and as you can see the results of the segmentation are different and uh, depending on where we start uh, to grow our region and there is a solution for this the solution is to partition uh, the range of image intensities into uh, different intervals based on uh, this parameter here. So we define one interval, another interval, and then until uh, we reach uh, the maximum intensity value of the image. So in this case, uh, given a seed pixel, we select the interval that contains the intensity of this pixel, and then to merge pixels adjacent uh, to this uh, seed pixel P, we merge the pixels if the intensity of uh, new adjacent pixels is also in the same interval that the seed pixel here. So with this solution here, we avoid uh, the problem observed uh, in the previous slide. Let's pass to the third uh, sample segmentation technique, which is split and merge. And, uh, this segmentation method also works directly with image pixels and what it does is uh, try to break the image into uh, different disjoint uniform regions. So the procedure of this method is a little bit different. It initially considers the whole image as an area of interest, so imagine that we have a whole image here. Then start applying a split uh, procedure and what it does is that if the area of interest is found no homogeneous, let's say that uh, this whole image we find that is not homogeneous according to some kind of similarity criterion that we impose, then we split the image in four quadrants of equal size. Then this step is applied to each new quadrant until we cannot uh, further split the image. So then we would consider this quadrant here. We will look here if the similarity criteria is met or not. If it's met, then we don't split this quadrant further. The same to these quadrants here. Then with this quadrant here, if we find that uh, the similarity criteria within the quadrant is not met, then we split into four new quadrants. And this is repeated here. Here we see a further split and uh, then we stop with where we cannot split any of the regions uh, more. 
then it comes a merge procedure and in this case we merge a JSON region that satisfies some similarity merge criteria and then this procedure is repeated until no further merge are possible. There are some options to uh, include in this algorithm such as a minimum size of the area so if we are going to split a region that is uh, smaller than some uh, a threshold then we don't split more and other variants of the algorithm apply uh, applies uh, merge after each split instead of applying the first uh, split and then merge uh, procedure this some example of similarity criteria could be for instance that we split uh, regions if the standard deviation of uh, grade levels is above a threshold so for instance if we look into region a if the standard deviation of grade levels here are, are uh, bigger enough, then we consider that this region is not sufficiently homogeneous, and then we will split this image into four quadrants. To merge uh, two images, there are uh, some possibilities. For instance, if we want to see if A and B regions should be merged or not, we could uh, look into the standard deviations of the union of A and B and if this standard deviation of this joint region is below a threshold then we will consider that uh, is uh, an homogeneous region and we will merge A and B. Another possibility is to use the mean grade levels of the A region and B region and if this uh, average grade levels are below a threshold but they are uh, sufficiently similar then we consider that these two regions are similar uh, in that sense and then we will match these two regions. This is an example of uh, the algorithm applied to this image here on the left. This is the result after uh, applying the split procedure and this is the result after applying the merging procedure to this image here. You can observe for instance here in this uh, in this part of the image that uh, because of the splitting procedure we get small uh, squares uh, here around this uh, boundary and then, then after uh, applying merging um, we get here um, a more uh, better segmentation. Anyway in regions here where we have um, rapid changes of intensity, um, the procedure is not so good here, it tends to uniform this region, to consider these regions as uniform, and uh, well, here it's working really well, because we can separate clearly uh, white and black regions corresponding to the these letters and the box and so on. There are some uh, problems with the algorithm. An unpleasant idea is that the square uh, region shape assumption which gives uh, as a result that maybe the segmentation of plane is not uh, good for the eye. And uh, a boundary of a segmented region is not necessarily an edge. For instance here, this uh, region here the white region is uh, segmented here of the sky, but here we observe that there is an intensity change from this region to this region, but there is no clear edge here. However, the algorithm says that there is uh, here two different regions, but there is no edge in the original image. The same happens here in the water, for instance, you can see here that since the intensity is changing in this direction, as a result, the algorithm uh, gives here different segmentation regions, but they don't correspond to clear edge uh, separations here. So this is an example of segmentation or results of segmentation where uh, there is no edges. So edges here. Uh, we would not be able to separate the different uh, regions of the water of different intensities but using this algorithm we get uh, these regions separated. 
and um, well, all these simple segmentation methods that we have uh, presented so far. Separate regions having uh, uniform gray levels, so they are based on the considering that the regions of the image that we want to separate are uniform in, in intensity, which is not always the case, so we should consider uh, this thing when applying this method if the regions that we want to separate uh, fulfill this consideration or not. And uh, for this reason we are going to present an advanced technique um, called uh, MEND SHIFT that uh, applies uh, some kind of additional intelligence to the processing. Previous segmentation methods only make use of uh, gray values of the image, so they are using only one-dimensional feature vectors. But here we are interested in using n-dimensional uh, feature vectors for segmentation. So for each pixel, there are many local properties that we can extract. These are some examples, but there are many others that could be could be used. We can use, for instance, gray values in that pixel or RGB values if we have color information available. We can al also use uh, gradient information uh, in vertical and horizontal directions. So we include uh, boundary information here. Here in, with RGB we are including color information in, in the segmentation. Here we are including boundary information. The mean and the standard deviation uh, around a pixel p. So here with this we include uh, these statistics in the segmentation procedure. And it's also useful to add, or could be useful to add coordinates at some way of a pixel to take into account spatial information. So we warranty that the segmented uh, regions are connected. Uh, then we form an n dimensional feature vector for each pixel. Uh, this is an example of feature vector including uh, the features presented here, but of course we could use um, a selection of them or we could use uh, different features extracted from the image uh, depending on, on what we consider that it's uh, relevant to segment uh, the type of image that we are using. Here uh, we have an example with uh, two features. For this segmentation method what we do is to compute the n-dimensional feature histogram with all uh, the features extracted. And of course the histogram represent the multiplicities of uh, these uh, feature vectors. In this example here with n equal to 2 we have this image. And in this image, uh, we extract the mean and the standard deviation in neighborhood of 3 times 3 around a pixel. So then we plot the combined uh, 2D histograms of uh, mean uh, gray level and standard deviation of the gray level in the defined uh, pixel neighborhood here. So this histogram is uh, representing, one point of the histogram is representing how many times the combined uh, mean gray level and standard deviation uh, level is happening in the image. For instance, if we look into this, uh, this car here, has uh, very dark uh, regions here, very dark uh, intensity and also the shadow of the car here is a big region with very low uh, intensity so all these pixels here will have a low mean value and a low standard deviation value because if we are looking into a three times three pixel neighborhood the standard deviation in each pixel will be uh, will be low so all the pixels here of the car will contribute here to a region of small uh, gray level on average and small standard deviation value. So we will mainly correspond uh, to this peak here. This peak corresponds to uh, very high values. So all these pixels zoom together and contribute to this peak here. 
all these regions here, these bright regions, these bright regions here, these bright regions here, are regions with a very high uh, gray value and at the same time a small standard deviation in in a three times three neighborhood. So this pixel here and this pixel here contribute to the histogram here in a region that has very high uh, gray values and very small um, standard deviation values. So the idea behind the mean shift uh, segmentation is to find these regions here. This algorithm is also called mod mode finding. And uh, so this peaks here and this peaks here is uh, giving you the different uh, regions of the image based, of course, in the mean uh, value of gray uh, intensities and the standard deviation value. So this interpretation here depends on the parameters that we are extracting in, in the pixels of the image. If we change these uh, parameters, we need to know what they are representing to know which maximum here uh, are uh, representing in the image. So, uh, of course, as I told, what we are going to do is to find uh, these uh, maximum regions here. And the algorithm works as follows. It starts with an initial random point here represented in the center of the circle. Then we calculate the center of gravity around this point within a circle of radius r and this our parameter uh, should be defined in the algorithm and then we move this window based on the center of gravity to the new uh, to a new point here where the center of gravity is higher we repeat the procedure we uh, extract or find the center of gravity uh, within this circle and move uh, the circle to the new point until it converges uh, to a point where the center of gravity uh, doesn't change anymore or uh, more appropriately it moves uh, in a distance which is below a threshold. So we start here and converge to a point here where there is a maximum and the idea is represented in this graph. So if we start for instance in this point we are going to converge to a maximum here. If we start here in this point, we are going to converge to a maximum here, and the same applies uh, to the different um, starting points in the image. So all these yellow points here are considered uh, to be represented by this maximum here. All these points here correspond to points in the histogram, and this point in the histogram correspond to pixels in the image. So all pixels in the image that uh, corresponds to these points here in the histograms are assigned to the class represented by this uh, peak value here. So all the pixels represented by these points are considered to be a single uh, segmentation region. And after applying this algorithm to all points in the histogram, uh, what we will obtain is the maximum here are the peaks of, of the different mountains that are in the histogram and all these paths here correspond to the different uh, points of the histogram converging to a peak here. So all pixels that converge to the same path, to the same uh, peak, uh, are assigned to the same uh, segmentation region and the same to all uh, the other uh, peaks in the histogram. So uh, different starting points that lead to the same final point, as I said here, are assigned uh, to the same class. So for instance, in this image, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different uh, segmentation regions. And there are two parameters of, uh, of this method that we have uh, used. One is the region of influence of the window we are moving towards uh, a peak 
this window of course uh, can have different shapes it can be uniform or we can apply a gaussian window or triangle window and there is also a stop criterion when given by the threshold uh, when we consider that the algorithm has converged and the window uh, doesn't move anymore or is moving uh, below this threshold this is an example of uh, segmentation uh, with this algorithm of the car image here and you can see here how this uh, dark region of the car has been extracted and also part of the of the shadow this region here very bright region here which is quite similar in uh, average intensity and standard deviation which are the two parameters that we are using here so this region is uh, this is considered to be a uniform region and the same apply here for instance these points here that correspond to these uh, white points or well not white but uh, uniform points also this region here are segmented here uniformly or this region so in this example we are using uh, average uh, intensity and the standard deviation so what the segmentation algorithm is giving us are regions with the same uh, standard same uh, average intensity and low standard deviation there are some uh, many other combination of parameters that can be used for of course in this example we are using color information and location information in this case uh, the hand for instance have a quite similar color this ring here has a similar color which is uh, very different from the hand and then the background uh, has a completely different color so as a result using color and location information we got segmented here the hand which is a similar color and uh, these other two regions which have uh, completely different colors but at the same time uniform within the different regions these are other two examples using color and location information in our feature vector and we can see here that this more or less uh, green color is very similar in color is segmented here this wall here has more or less uh, similar color which is different from this color here and also different from this color here so these two regions are segmented here uh, separately and the same for the others here for instance this region here is segmented and considered different from this region here which is uh, brighter and with some different color than this one this is an example showing that we can also um, use different parameters for each uh, kind of features used by the algorithm this example makes use of uh, color information and location information and uh, uh, the window used uh, by the algorithm the size of this window is different for this type of parameters we are using a Gaussian window, window apply to X and Y parameters here having uh, Sigma S and a different Gaussian window to RGB parameters having Sigma R and you can see here that the Sigma applied to this to each type of parameters is uh, different and at the same time what happens when you change the size of these windows here so if your window is uh, small as represented here on the right you are you get uh, small segmentation regions because this window when you are moving this window you are looking into a very small region so 
uh, you are getting uh, small regions of segmentation but if your uh, window is bigger then you are uh, looking into a bigger regions so for this reason you consider for instance that this region has a uniform uh, brown color that in this case uh, you get the separation of the different degrees of the different shades of, of brown color that are found here and the same applies uh, to this region here for instance or to this region here so uh, this is the end of the presentation these are the references that uh, I have used uh, for these slides uh, this reference here is not uh, available online but you can ask me for a copy um, and these two other uh, references are available online here uh, they will also be made available in the web of the course and um, this uh, reference here contains some other advanced segmentation methods that have not, have not been shown here and uh, okay i hope you have enjoyed this class thank you very much for your attention and enjoy